All right, so let's talk about a little bit more specific types of testing, which we will call in that scenario the contract testing. And usually you don't see this on a monofig applications within this monofig apps. Uh, mostly you will find these types of testings when it comes to microservices. Yeah, this is basically the implication of the fact that we don't have the shared contracts. Uh, we do have the, like, the local copies, so it would, it would be nice to have some sort of uh, tests that would ensure us that mm -hmm. both on the consumer and the provider side, we do have the match, let's say, on the properties names or something. So the, we'll, we'll have no issue with the serializing messages. Right, so we'll need two parties, right, to take part in, yeah. in this uh, contract testing. So we, we need a provider, someone that exposes the public API and uh, public contracts, let's say the web API with some details, and also, we will need the consumer, right? Yeah, exactly. So let's say the service A. So how, how would it look like? Let's say we'll have the service A and service B. And at first, we need to provide this service B mock, right? Yeah, this will be the approach. Uh, if we'll, according to the pack, which we'll discuss in a, in a minute, yeah, but basically, if we, if, we, if we would follow exactly the pact uh, strategy for this testing, we'll first on the consumer side, we'll run spin off some sort of the mock for the service B, so for the provider. And then we will uh, actually do this, let's say the fake call with the particular, mm -hmm. to this particular endpoint. And uh, the result should be uh, some sort of file. Uh, this will be a JSON file mm -hmm. that would, uh, that will have the definition for the contract. So basically, the pact is generated on the consumer side with the I would say the whole expectations about the particular endpoint. So in this case, we do have in, in this pack, we have uh, the name of the consumer of the provider, and then we have the list of the interactions. So okay. we have this interaction in which we describe that this is the get to retrieve the particular product. And uh, this is the HTTP get with this is the particular endpoint. And this is the response that I expect, right? So we have like two, 200 and the shape of the body. So from the consumer's perspective, since this is my, yeah. uh, this, this, uh, this is actually worth mentioning, the, the pact itself is all about the consumer driven testing. Mm -hmm. So consumer is always right. So basically uh, this means the implication of this approach is that uh, running the tests this first phase on the consumer side should always succeed, should always okay. make this test pass. And as a result, we'll have this JSON file with the definition of the pact. And now we are moving to the, I would say the step number two, which would be uh, on the provider side. And now what the providers do is, uh, it's simply what it does is taking this uh, definition for this pact mm -hmm. and it uses the data inside to actually call itself mm -hmm. and check whether the response that he provides matches the expectations. So if if yes, then we have this match on the contract side. If no, then uh, yeah, that means that the provider we somehow, have some inconsistency. Yeah, somehow broke this uh, pact, this public contract, and it needs some further fixing. Yeah, and of course on the provider side, this test will not always uh, be green, right? Right, right. So this is a very simple idea. And uh, yeah, we can go to the Pact.io to see the, 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 the site and the yeah. whole uh, description about the approach. Yeah. So this is actually where this uh, approach originated, right? From the Pact.io, yeah, exactly. they have their documentation, their specification. They have like different libraries for different languages. Uh, but one thing to mention about the libraries actually, eventually we had to write our custom wrapper because we could use this ASP.NET Core's test host, right, which is an ideal, an ideal thing for these types of testing, uh, because at least pr previously, uh, for the .NET package, there was just a rubber, rubby wrapper that would sometimes fail on a Windows due to like too long paths or there will be some not too great performance. So we just made our yeah, custom wrapper on top of the web API factory. Yeah, basically there is. Nothing. The, the, this this whole process is not that uh, hard to actually mm -hmm. implement because if we think about this whole process, this is just generating the uh, JSON file based on some definition inside my test on the consumer side, and then just using the capabilities of the the discussed, uh, let's say the end-to-end -end testing to actually perform the the proper HTTP call to 
to the web API. So this is nothing more than this. So for this purpose, we have this project called Pactify. Uh, we'll yeah. use this one to actually uh, do this sort of consumer-driven testing. And uh, worth mentioning that the Pactify itself uses the same naming conventions as the Pact. Yeah. So we can use this with, uh, with the Pact tool, which we'll do. Yeah, um, we'll just follow the so. convention. Um, all right, so let's see how we can make use of this uh, contract testing. Yeah. And so for the starters, where is the consumer, where is the provider? Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll switch from the availability service to two different microservices. So we will see the, um, so we'll see the integration on the parcels and the orders. And we'll start with the consumer, which in this case will be the parcel microservice. Okay. So if we go to the parcel microservice and the test, you will see that there is uh, already um, implemented mm -hmm. uh, test scenario for this. So the definition is pretty uh, pretty basic. So basically, if we'll see, yeah. Let's open this one. Yeah, this is just the whole code that is needed. So what we do have, uh, the first we have the options. So in the options we can specify two things. First is whether do we care about the casing? Because in some some scenarios we might not be uh, that tied to the particular casing. This mm -hmm. might not mean that we broke the pact itself between the microservices. And the other one would be uh, ignoring the values. Yes. So, so we can either ignore the values. So for example, we could just expect the ID to, ID to be numeric, but we don't care about the value. We can have the yeah. exact match, but we could also uh, follow some set of, for example, regular expressions and maybe validate that the daytime has the valid format or exactly. those sort of things. Yeah, so this is the uh, the options part. Now we use the Fluent API to actually produce mm -hmm. this JSON. So we use this Pact Maker, um, Pact Maker to create, to do so. So first we uh, pass our options, then we define between which microservices we want to define the pack. And these two strings will be used later for producing the name for our JSON file. And then we start with the interactions. So for, the, for now, we'll just focus on the one interaction. So uh, we are uh, following also this convention given when then. So we have like given existing parcel, what we want to uh, achieve. So this is the get request to retrieve the parcel yeah, details. Yeah, and this is just pretty much a description. So it's not like some magic yeah. string that does the testing. Yeah, exactly. And then what we want to perform. So this will be get method, HTTP mm -hmm. get method, then the endpoint for this particular um, for this particular parcel and what is the expected response. So we expect the response to be 200. So the okay, mm -hmm. we have the particular content type and the uh, body and the body has just the generic parameter and this will simply produce the shape of the body so we don't we will have like default values since we don't care uh, about the values this is defined in the options uh, we can simply pass this as a generic parameter this will generate the shape uh, something that we've already seen with the uh, contracts definition uh, using our attribute that was the the same idea and okay. then at the very very uh, end we have like published this as a file and we specify the directory so we'll like the five levels above and simply call make async so we can run this, this yeah let's, should... let's see so it should produce some file that will be yeah served into our local drive should produce a file but not fail <laughs> yeah so it seems that it's working. Yeah, and now, now we can open the code and see. Yeah, let's jump to our code. So we should see, yeah, here we have our PAX directory that was just created by this test. And there is this PAX definition, right? Yeah, exactly. So the consumer provider interactions, request, response. So what do we expect? What do we send to the provider? All right, cool. So I think now it's time to move to the provider side, right? Exactly, yeah. So the provider will be slightly more uh, Complicated, but not that much. So this will be on the uh, on the uh, the provider is on the parcels uh, service, right? In this right. case. So we have this class, the parcels API pack provider test. Yeah, exactly. So in this case, uh, the more code will be actually in the range mm -hmm. because first, if we think about the provider side. Once again, we don't want to use the production database, right? Mm -hmm. We need to actually use something uh, that will spin up eventually and we could then clean it up. So we can make the usage of our MongoDB fixture once again. So first, we inside this arrange region, we can see that we have like the, the declaration for the particular parcel that mm -hmm. we will insert. 
And then we have the stuff that we already know. So the MongoDB fixture and the HTTP client that is uh, created from the this time from the test server. This is another approach of how we can actually mm -hmm. make the integration tests in ASP.NET Core. So this is pretty much all up to you whether you will use this one or the or the application factory. But basically, we create the HTTP client, and uh, this is pretty much it. If we go to the test, the first line would be simply the insertion. So we want to okay. insert the parcel uh, with the particular ID to MongoDB, so that when we actually try to do this get, uh, we'll have some data in our uh, database. Now, keep in mind that the now we have to have have this match uh, when it comes to the IDs. So the ID in here would be the same like on the consumer side. Mm -hmm. But the Pactify itself also supports the templating. So the value of this ID will not yeah. uh, be necessarily have to be the same. So we have like the insertion and like uh, and now on the provider side we simply run the verifier. So first we need to pass the client. So mm -hmm. in this case that would be this proxy object client. Uh, created by the test server. Now we need to uh, define the between whom we'll have the verification and then from uh, what directory we should grab the JSON file. All right, and then so verify async and yeah. that's it. So let's see, uh, it should work as well. Yeah. Should be verified. Yeah, this will, it might take a while. We'll see uh, just right. in a minute to actually. Yeah. We've got a grid. So we didn't break the pack. So maybe let's try to break break the pack. Let's see what happens. Yeah, right? we can do this directly in a JSON file. Yeah, we could either break the pack somewhere here, maybe change the ID or change the like structure of our DTO. Yeah. But we can also go there and even modify or modify on this on this uh, consumer service level. That, for example, we would expect this uh, to have the ID two, let's say. Okay. ID two, right? Yeah. For for whatever reason. So on the on the consumer side, someone named the property ID two for some bizarre reason, and now we'll have this inconsistency when it comes to the definition. So we can run this once again on the provider side. Yeah, or on the provider side, we change the DTO, and now the consumer couldn't couldn't yeah. get the data. So let's see, and we got a failure, and we can see here in the logs that. Expected property ID two wasn't present, right? Yeah. So, so we have an issue. Yeah, we have an issue. So, that's the way to actually verify that the provider doesn't break the contract. Yeah, exactly. And the the only piece we we actually uh, we need right now because if we think about the contract testing on the, during the you know daily basis mm -hmm. when you do the development, that this following approach works just fine because that was. On your local machine, right? Mm -hmm. So there was just like shared. Uh, there was shared the uh, some disk space between the consumer and the provider. If we keep remembering the fact that we have like separated repositories on our GitHub, that would not be possible. So instead of doing this, uh, I, I mean, generating and putting the file on your disk, we could do uh, another approach, and that would be putting the uh, packed file into some external registry, which would be nothing more but a simple, let's call this service, uh, that would be responsible for having this, uh, allowing you to actually post uh, the pack and mm -hmm. retrieve this. So um, this is actually when we can make use of the pack broker. So yeah. if we go to GitHub, we have so this. So this is just like another extension which, pr give a, which will give us this server with Web API to which we can actually save this yeah. Send and save this uh, packs and yeah. then verify them through the HTTP calls. Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, the easiest way would be simply cloning this repository. Yeah, and you can find here the Docker Compose instruction how to run it. Right. Exactly. So you can just clone this repo and run it. So we we have this have this one up and running already here for Docker Compose. The only thing we did we as suggested in the Docker Compose file we just commented out the nginx. So it's running there and we can access this one. On the local host nine uh, nine two nine two. Yeah. So, so this is the yeah, example pack. We can yeah. see what's what's doing. We can see some <laughs> simple connection between the API and the example application between this consumer provider and some other other metadata. Exactly. And we can uh, check uh, what's going on here. So let's see how we can uh, integrate with this. Maybe I will remove this one. Yeah. So the only change that we need to provide. Uh, of course, this will the change will be required both on the consumer side because now we would like to publish this contract 
to this uh, to this registry. Mm -hmm. So if we we'll go to uh, consumer side, we need to only change uh, actually one line. So the line responsible for uh, yeah saving this to particular uh, yeah, directory. So we we'll need to call this publish via HTTP, and yeah. here we'll need to provide some uh, dedicated uh, URL, right? So we'll need to know what's the URL of this uh, internal packed broker Docker API. Yeah. Broker Docker API. Yeah, to but basically this this will be send the file to. Yeah, you can use the, the Docker DNS, whatever you want. Uh, of course, depends on your on your infrastructure. But basically, uh, what you need is the in this case is the string, and then you need to specify that this will be a put method. Okay. So, uh, so the yeah, so we have client this, will know. So we have this long string coming from the documentation for yeah. sending the pack. So let's try to run our uh, test one more time. Yeah. Once again, this should be green because yeah, the consumer side. The consumer. Yeah, and after a while, we should see that this is passing. Yep. All right. Okay, and maybe let's, already. let's go back here and let's refresh this page. All right. So we have our packed yeah, for the we can click this. orders. Yeah. And we have we see that. And if you actually click the, on the arrow, we can see the. Uh, yeah. We can see some. Yeah. External data. Uh, some that details of this pack actually. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we can do the same for the provider, right? Just yeah. uh, modify this uh, URL. Yeah, so basically we, we need to change the method also for the retrieving the pack. So now instead okay. of getting this from the disk, we'll get this from this external registry. So on the provider side, we need to also change this. Yeah, the retrieve exactly. from via HTTP. Here we can provide our URL. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, because this would, that will be always the HTTP GET. In that case, we are using the latest part, but we can version them as well here. And maybe I will just get rid of this file so it's no longer here and no longer needed. Let's remove this. Okay, so let's try to run this test one more time from the provider's perspective now. And this should work as well. Let's see, and uh, should be green. Wait for it. Yeah, and it's green. So that's the way how we can actually ensure this uh, integrity, this uh, non-breaking changes once we start having our local contracts for details, for messages, events, commands, and so on. We could also do the similar approach for you know testing our messages yeah. for uh, message broker, and yeah, it's good to have this uh, consumer-driven contract testing because otherwise, if the provider makes some changes and breaks our public contracts, especially when the provider removes some fields or even worse changes, for example, the underlying type. Let's say the provider will change the identifier from integer to good, and now our application will most likely will be broken when it tries to retrieve this yeah. uh, value using the old version of this type. Yeah, and uh, just make uh, make sure once you actually w would like to involve this uh, into your build server, or uh, maybe the build pipeline. Yeah, so basically you will start from the consumer side. So mm -hmm. once you actually do some changes in the repository, the first thing you want to do is publish the newest packs to your registry and then uh, run yourself as a provider for the potential uh, consumers. So this is how you can actually make this uh, work when it comes to the uh, to the deployment stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's it. Yeah. A pretty straightforward, uh, very powerful uh, approach. And now we'll move forward to the last type, which will be in this case the performance testing.